Well, I'm going to kick off this video by looking at the very simple and basic party popper. And what's really interesting about a party popper is it's a fantastic example of the use of a tiny explosive charge to create a big effect. The humble old party popper has a few tricks up its sleeve. It's got a very tiny charge that's initiated by pulling a string. It's got a void here and voids very important. It's got a cardboard disc, it's got a load of streamers and it's got another cardboard disc. And if you've ever played around with one of these what you'll notice is that if you remove the void or remove this disc you'll find that it will not work. It's really well designed and it's a very very clever explosive device. If you've got any sort of curiosity about explosives it's well worth getting head around what's going on inside a party popper to start with. Ah oh yes, the humble old party popper is a perfect example of. It's not about the amount of explosives you've got, it's the way it's set up. Even when filmed with slow motion cameras, a party popper's action still seems very fast. Those streamers are really on the move. If I load one with talc, you can start to see just how powerful and focused the explosive charge is all thanks to the special way the charge is set up inside this device. This video is a very basic insight into miniature pyro. Due to YouTube's terms of service, I can't detail to you how to make the explosives seen in this video. You'll need to connect to an experienced and licensed operator to understand more. I write down a word which many people will find extremely boring, but it's an essential word and it's safety. And in the world of pyro, Safety incorporates a number of things, but one word which is strongly linked to safety is this word. is testing, and really, before you do anything, you've got to do a regime of testing. You need to understand what you're dealing with, and these two words are so, so linked. Um, unfortunately, I could tell you of some really, really serious accidents that have happened because this word here was neglected. I'm putting together a video which will see this fireworks train blown up so I made a model of the fireworks train so I'm not blowing up real toys and I'll also be doing some testing on some fake clone toys well let's think about blowing up a train and I'm going to call it train one and I'm going to use two different types of charges in this I can't discuss what they are because this is only YouTube all I'm discussing is principles here one is a very high speed charge which has got plasticine around it and I know from past experience that plasticine has a fantastic ability to be motivated at high speed and wreak destruction. We also have another charge in there which let's call it a pretty one and it's a baggie of stuff that once again I can't discuss. I just draw it as dots and it'll have some spingly spangly things and that's in essence what will be inside train one. And please let me stress, I'm not discussing bomb making here, I'm discussing the principles and safety behind special effects pyrotechnics. Three, two, one. those who know me in the real world are going to relate to that. <laughs> it's nothing left. All around the blacks at the back there's plasticine everywhere and there's a little piece of train carriage up there as well. Well it's pretty clear I'll be working backwards. <laughs> God, I can't stop laughing. Oh dear I think it was slightly overcharged. That's not where you meant to start from. <laughs> So let's go in and do a little post-blast examination. Even though this train is totally disintegrated, we can learn a lot of stuff about the charges that were used and hopefully improve on the next one. This is the main body of the carriage here. The flash charge was here. The much faster and more sinister charge was up this end and it has totally disintegrated the plastic there. This is one of the very few pieces of roof that I've been able to find. That's uh, the end with the face on it. Um, that was found at a far corner of the shed. Inside you can see how the plasticine has hit this and motivated it away. And there's a closer look at the plasticine which is smeared inside that carriage. Well this section here is what I call the off camera side of the carriage. It's one of the 
only pieces that I've been able to find to put together as a jigsaw piece and it wasn't struck at all with a knife and you can see how easy uh, this has been shattered by the charge inside and again this is just proof of how low quality the plastic is in this fake Thomas toy the vast majority of the carriage was reduced to pieces this size and I dare say I'll be finding little pieces like this in my garage for many months and years to come on the end of my CSI fingertip there you can see just how small some of these fragments of plastic are after that explosion and this is only a very small portion of these tiny fragments there are so many of them about I could spend a whole week picking them up the other item which took a fair whack in this is this Trackmaster track I can't see any damage to this track there's bits of plasticine which have been smeared onto this piece of track but because it's a quality product it has stayed intact it had a hell of a blast well by showing you all this what it really enforces is that word testing no matter how much I think I know about blowing stuff up or pyro in essence I don't know anything until I've done a test and I don't want this to be seen as an instructional on how to blow stuff up I just want it to be a little sneak peek into a world that not many people get to see well <laughs> it's very obvious this plasticine bomb hammered uh, that little train obviously it was useless because even at high speed photography the train vaporized and you could barely see any pretty stuff so let's move on and do another one um, and we'll call it train 2 and we're going to attack this in a very different way there'll be a charge inside the train and let's keep away from the sparks because those sparks looked a bit I don't know, a bit danky. Might be a charge. I can't discuss what's in the charge, but let's. It's going to be more like a flame effect, so I'm just going to draw it like that. Um, and it's tiny. It's much smaller than the one we had before. And it's also going to have a second charge. And I mean, this is tiny. I can't discuss what it is, so it'll be two shots. It'll be shot one, shot two, fired within milliseconds and it's shot with a high speed camera so there'll be hopefully a very small det determination of time between seeing these two this one here it's actually a core, there's a core charge in here as well but once again I can't discuss so it's, there's two components going on here um, this will pull apart the train um, and you'll see this was set up differently as well here and this one here will hopefully lift up the base of the train and get some dancing going on uh, and hopefully we'll get something which looks far better than that first train which basically vaporized well I've successfully showed you I can blow a small plastic toy the smithereens and I dare say anybody could do that if they had a go let's tackle this problem in a slightly different way what we have here is another fake toy it's on a real McCoy and I've cut it up into some pieces and this is just an example I mean if you're doing this for real it would be all jagged to look like it's blown up and more importantly underneath I've given it a strong point at one end and I'll be using much much smaller charges and a different type of explosive to blow it up this next time around and I think you'll see a totally different result here I am looking at the little carriage before I blow it up and remember this is about principles and not about bomb making I'm not discussing what the charges are there's a very tiny charge underneath the strong end here is a charge in the middle of this carriage and what I'll do is I'm going to dress in some of the pieces from that previous <laughs> disaster and hopefully they'll be flying about and then I'll put the pre-cut pieces over the top and this time around the charges are going to be separated uh, in timing and it really is a suck it and see because normally you would never be blowing up miniatures of this very tiny size okay this puppy is charged loaded and ready to blow Three, two, one. So you can see the debris field has been pushed away that far from the center of the explosion. But the most important part is I still have my large pieces of carriage and I'll show you why this plays out to be a very 
important thing to have because this time around when I blew up the little carriage it wasn't overcharged by a crazy pyro monkey I can come in and clean this up and use it again for another take well how about I reset it and this time around I'll only put one charge in and that'll be the one inside the carriage with all the debris around this next time around I'm gonna have one of the slow motion cameras up nice and close protected by a piece of glass three two one So let's go in and look at what happened after that second explosion. Remembering there's only one charge inside the carriage there. Um, once again, the debris is all around fairly close to where the single charge was. The end pieces of the carriage, one's there, one landed here in front of the cameras. And another piece has landed over here. And it's actually just beside the glass that protects that camera there. So it's not that far away. Inside this carriage, I can't show you how these charges were made or what's in them, but I'm telling you now, these are tiny, tiny charges. And really the whole point of this video is showing you that sometimes it's not about the massive grunt of an explosive, it's the way that it's set up. And hopefully I've given you a very, very simple demonstration of that. You know, I watch a lot of television and you see on some shows them blowing things up and the pyro guy comes in and does stuff. And there's one thing, that really scares me when I watch some of these shows and you'll hear people say oh we'll do it again and we'll double the charge and unfortunately I can tell you of some really really serious accidents that have occurred by going from stage one and doubling the charge and going up to stage two doubling the charge you know people say oh it's gonna you're gonna get double the effect well, it's actually, that's a myth. Very careful using the word myth there. Um, but it's this is something that is really important to get your, your head around. And basically the whole context or the whole purpose of this video is to show you that sometimes it's the way things are set up in a clever way where you can have a great effect versus just putting a big explosive in something and thinking, oh, it's going to look fantastic. And... This is the very, very secretive world of miniature special effects. And it's sadly, it's, a, it's what I call the dinosaur art form. Because these days, it's very rarely ever called upon. But this video is purely to get you keyed into something that not many people know about. And hopefully, you'll enjoy seeing the way it works. Maybe one day in the future, I will bring you the story related to this door. Uh, this door is quarter scale, it belongs to a model of a helicopter, quite a famous helicopter in movie terms. The actual helicopter that this belongs to resides under my house now, and maybe it's worth having a very close examination of why this door looks like this. And my story would tell of thinking outside the square to resolve some really tricky problems. And I'm pretty sure that's always going to be helpful and inspirational to others. Okay, thanks for watching, and you know what it's time for. Farewell! Three, two, one. Farewell! Three, two, one. Three, two, one. Three, two, one.
three, two, one.